don't think that you have at, at any time in your life a need to do any sort of specific type of exercise based yeah, on your I can't age. do that because I'm old. I'm too old. Well, yeah. I can't be in the gym, I'm too old. Who the yeah. fuck said that? Hello and welcome to another vlog on YouTube and podcast on Spotify by the Fit Minds Podcast. I always have to start these podcasts really quietly and then I just start yelling by the end of it. <laughs> and they were really loud. I think we just have to get the baby used to us talking. Our volume. Yeah, yeah our volume. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Sorry if we both sound a bit nasally. Mm. We've been overcoming a cold in this house. What's interesting, though, is like, it's been a pretty... It's a, a cold. It, there's no, like, virus or anything. Mm. Um, Lila got her first sickness and... She's handling it like a champ. She's doing very well. She's so happy. She's got this like little runny nose and she's just laughing all the time. Yeah. So it's funny how we get colds and flus and we think, oh, I'm, I'm dying. dying. And then the baby's like, I'm having the best time of my life. I just can't breathe. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are complaining about. Yeah. So this week's topic is focused on different nutrition and exercise. Well, we're going to just do like exercise, but I figured nutrition t ties in with it. Different nutrition and exercise implications, I don't know, applications for every stage of life. We think that different ages need these vastly different approaches mm -hmm. because like we must just automatically when we turn 40 just have this, yeah, yeah, like, oh, I've got to change my nutrition now I'm 40. Mm. Um, so maybe let's start off with, let's get stuck into it. Sorry if you can hear Lolly snoring. If you're watching on YouTube, I swear some people listen to this podcast and like, what is going on? Hey, else. Uh, Lolly, Chloe's got both the baby and the dog asleep next to her. That's on her. nice, a comfy cozy. Gives me some time away from being touched all the time. Anyway, let's start with the very early stages. Obviously, you know, having a baby, I wouldn't have known the first thing, I'm going to be honest, about child nutrition or at least infancy mm. because I know that it's breast milk formula. That's the early stages is milk up until a certain point and mm -hmm. I've learnt now obviously what all of those are. So they're the obvious ones, focusing on hydration status, nutrients from both formula and breast milk, um, however baby is fed, and then changing or converting over to solids slowly from six months onwards. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a process. Um, I remember <coughs> when Sienna started solids, it was um, under the guidance of obviously a paediatrician, mm -hmm. and they recommend introducing at least one new food group a week. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, just because of, like, food aversions. Um, food group as in from fruits and vegetables to, yeah, say, for so example. A, a food group in terms of, like, a food. Mm. So, like, start with sweet potato. Mm. A lot of, um, there's lots of recommendations to start kids on rice cereal. Mm. But in reality, there's absolutely no nutritional value in rice cereal. No, I'm fixing her mic. Hold on, there we go. No, she's um, touching my boobies. No, I'm touching your boobies. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole rice cereal phenomena too is the um, Nestle, the company Nestle. Mm. I've got some lovely hair attached to my sock. Nestle is a part of putting together the, if you have to look at the recommendations of government guidelines, it is written by Nestle mm. <laughs> or sponsored by Nestle. It's within the interest of them to obviously endorse a product of their own. It doesn't mean that rice or rice cereal isn't bad. bad but it but I would, if you're would opting for yeah. rice cereal, mm. um... Mix it with either breast milk or formula. 100%. More, more nutrients um, in there. Or mash a banana in it. If, you, if you've obviously introduced banana, mm. that's what we used to do. Even, um, but if you think about it, you're right. Rice cereal is, there's mm. not much in it really from a micronutrient perspective. Yeah. Not, you know, not really and that's far. one of the first things that they recommend introducing. Nuts. And also what I found really funny was meat. Meat was like, oh, you know, make sure you push meat really quickly. Mm. Uh, I mean, meat, absolutely. Protein, iron and red meat, etc. Essential amino acids, fantastic for muscles, but fruits and vegetables mm. can become neglected from the start. Very start yeah. And we're not vegans. We just, no. we're nutritionists knowing that, what is it, uh, less than 10% of Australians are eating adequate fruits and vegetables. Exactly right. That's nuts. Everyone you speak to nowadays. And it's not even, it's not even, the thing is, 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 is like we recommend fruits and vegetables. No, mm. it's not just a recommendation. If you don't do this, you are so much more likely to develop chronic disease, illness, sickness, the list goes on. Mm. You will be more subject, far more subject to some of these things you're experiencing in life aren't just happening by 
coincidence. They're happening yeah. because you are neglecting your yeah. nutrition. Yeah. So it starts there, right? Yeah. It starts when we start introducing vegetables, fruit. Look, I won't get into the details of exactly how and what. And my GP said every three days, introduce a new new food. Mm. And it's nuts, like one week, three days. Mm. It's, it's such a... Oh, there's so much rice cereal, uh, vegetables, mm. fruits. Uh, so which one do we start with? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Whether you introduce eggs for allergen type of stuff. Mm. So I'm not going to go too far into that. But we really want to focus on the very early stages of life is that we are introducing whole foods yeah and when we say whole foods we mean it literally that's what it means the food in its whole version yeah so i think people get a bit confused with whole foods and they think that's just healthy foods in quotation mm. marks a lot of packaging will be like whole food it's not a whole food unless mm. it is a whole food is in the food is like sweet potato whole food mm. just a sweet potato you know um what's an example rice by itself whole food yeah just rice yeah you know Nothing and so else. we're getting a bit lost in nutrition with you know, all these like advertisements and things being pushed at us when really if you don't go into your cupboard and you, and you don't have a decent amount of whole foods in there, mm. like you're doing something wrong. Yeah. You need to take a step back and get back to the basics. Yeah. However, obviously, as we know, going through infancy, childhood, women are time poor. It is really hard to, mm, you know, it's tricky. Back in the day, we're cooking up all the things from scratch. Probably some mamas out there who still do that. Mm-hmm. Kudos to you. Mm. I don't know how much of that I will be doing, but yeah. Um, there are some great alternatives and you can even think of it this way. Someone told me at the gym, I didn't even think about this, but they were boiling up pumpkin, like a ton of different veggies once I've introduced a few of them and freezing them. That's what we used to do in ice cubes. In ice cubes. Yeah. How? And apparently they don't know the difference no. between... You just... Um, you defrost it in the fridge or... Uh, defrost it in the fridge and then stick it in the microwave. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nuts. Anyway, there you go. Meal prep for babies and all around. Or, or, uh, little ones yeah. and so exercise wise in the early days it's all just natural human movement isn't it it's you know crawling it's trying to encourage them to be mobile you're not really going to be running around doing sprints with your baby i mean once they're mobile maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh but playgrounds you know as they're quite little yeah learning their balance stability this is all the stuff that we're doing naturally or should be doing naturally with our children yeah that is a part of them you know uh, yeah, establishing yeah. even their running gait, all that type of stuff as, as children. And, uh, does it mean that, because there's this common misconception that resistance or weights-based training should not be introduced or at least isn't beneficial or is detrimental for a child's health until they're you know, well established into puberty. Mm-hmm. At the moment, there is no, none, no significant science support that if we were to give a three-year-old, you know, a half a kilo dumbbell, to do bicep curls with, yeah. that it's going to hurt their growth no. or that it's going to stunt anything. That, yeah. You know, no, it doesn't do It anything. comes from a perspective of safety. Correct. And the environment that they're in. We, like you mentioned to me earlier, there's no real equipment that's catered to the younger population. Maybe in a few decades' time we might see a shift and we might see that Maybe we do have like little mini baby gyms and whatever, yeah. and, and you know, and, and you know, what? physio environments, there are that. Mm. They do have things for children, like pieces of equipment that they can use. So, resistance bands, for example, mm-hmm. which people go, oh, they're, you know, they're fine. That has a resistance on it that is equivalent to a 7.5 kilo dumbbell. But the problem is with a 7.5 kilo dumbbell, you can throw it at someone and hurt them, yeah. <laughs> right? So, the risk is more about the fact that things like barbells, dumbbells, machinery, it's not design for a child even the size of it is not designed for a child the safety aspect is that yes they could drop it on their foot Mm. you know they could not be able to maybe lift a barbell off themselves so as you said it's less about whether it's bad for them and more about whether our current gym environments Mm -hmm. are actually even designed for children or catered for children um but i do like the idea of jungle gyms you know yeah there's lots of them around yeah I mean, you even look at um, in parks and things like that, swings, uh, seesaws, monkey bars. bars. What do you think they are? Sienna just started doing the monkey bars. How cool. Has she got the blisters? Yeah. Yeah. Tried to do it with her and I was like, "Ah." Tough, tough girl (laughs) blisters. I know it's nuts, hey. You're going to need like one or two. You think, holy shit, I used to run across these when I was a kid. Um, But that's all a form of resistance because body weight calisthenics is technically resistance on the muscle tissue. Yeah. You know, your arms are not really the you know hold 
you know, in body weight for prolonged periods of time. But mm -hmm. if you are doing that as a child, then you are conditioning your muscles. So here we are thinking kids, you know, shouldn't be doing resistance training. No, it's just that they already are. We just don't realize it. Yeah, exactly. We don't realize right. they're building muscle tissue. They're, you know, cardiovascular activities should be widely encouraged, I think, from a young age, you know, all the way through to when you die. Um, but the form of cardiovascular activity changes, and we'll talk about that and, and as to why. Um, so obviously going through, let's progress into, because we could go on forever about it, but childhood, what do we see a lot of that uh, exercise-wise for kids? It starts to drop, oh, the team sports. Yeah, team sports. Yeah, they like, you made the point this morning. Team sports, um, like obviously with them being at school, a lot mm. of schools have the opportunity for team sports. Mm. I know personally... That was when my mm. involvement was very high. I think I was playing netball, Oztag, was umpiring. Mm. And there's even individual sports like Taekwondo. I mean, technically you're versing other people, but yeah. I, mean, I did te like team boxing. sports. I did, I did, I also did, um, I like touch because I was a sprinter. Mm -hmm. I loved you know, athletics as well. I think they're all fantastic. Mm. But these are fairly, you can still injure yourself. Yeah. You know, the risk is still there. This is why this whole debate of, you know, kids will hurt themselves weightlifting. Kids will also hurt themselves playing soccer. Mm. Kids will hurt themselves doing fucking anything. Kids will hurt themselves at all oh, ages. Oh, honestly, kids will hurt themselves at home for no reason when you've turned your back for three seconds. Yeah. You exactly know, right. they will hurt themselves yeah. on anything. And they will hurt themselves on the pot plant in your house. Mm. So, you know, raving on about saying gyms aren't safe. Neither are households. Mm. Neither are the public, the public whole environments. World. Oh my god, I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> Holy shit! I actually said to <laughs> Bubble Rat, I said to Alex last night. I was like, "Does it worry you that like bad things are going to happen to Lila when she's older?" And he's like, mm. "Not really." And I was like, "It scares the shit out of me." Mm, I think it's a mother's instinct. Oh my god, I'm we like, we delve into the worst possible situations and scenarios. Well, we like with all the whole DV stuff going on at the moment. I think to myself, "Oh my god, I have a daughter, and mm. she's going to be in a relationship one day, mm -hmm. and that scares the shit out of me because mm. I'm like." If she ends up in the wrong hands, mm. we're not to know until we're told, right? Yeah. Anyway, tangent. So exercise, we see team sports, nutrition-wise for, you know, going through childhood in early, early pre-teens, all that sort of stuff. The biggest problems we're seeing is deficiencies, micronutrient deficiencies, especially in Western countries. Mm. Nuts, right? We have all the money in the world. We're first world countries, and yet our children have the worst nutrition. And a lot of the reason for it is we're seeing iron deficiencies because kids aren't just aren't eating meat sometimes or, and, you know, go through their stages. Yeah. It is tricky, obviously, um, with kids fussy picky. eaters kids and stuff like picky. that. And that's why it's, it's quite important to introduce it early. Mm. And um, frequently. And frequently. The thing I told you this morning, this is fascinating for mums out there, for anyone who's feeling a bit defeated with introducing different foods to their kids, they go through stages as we went, we went through. Fine. You know, I couldn't eat bananas when I was a kid because it gave me heartburn and now I just eat them because I like them. Sienna doesn't eat cheese and butter. You just randomest things, right? You just my brother didn't eat avocado, pumpkin and eggs because it was too soft and it was a mm. food aversion thing. You know. I was a kid who ate everything except Brussels sprouts and eggplant. Still to this day do not like Brussels sprouts, not eggplant. Ugh. You cannot force me to eat eggplant, do you not don't do not dare me. I um, make some moussaka, which no. is like an eggplant lasagna without the pasta. Mm. And like it grinds my gears because mum's mm -hmm. like, It's beautiful and I'm like it tastes like snot. It's not lasagna. Eggplant has no flavour. It's just yeah. a vegetable that... It's, it's the texture too. It's the texture. It's yeah. the te I digress. Um, so we're seeing micronutrient deficiencies. A lot of it is because we, we really don't want to force our children, shouldn't force children to eat certain food types, whatever. It's true. Don't try and force your child. But I read something the other day, and apparently it can take up to 20 attempts at a particular one food item, so say broccoli, mm -hmm. 20 times. That's wild. Now, that is too much for me. Like, personally, I my brain... Up after I, like I, yeah, five, six, I'm like, I'm done. Bro, I am done. <laughs> I'm done? <laughs> Fuck your broccoli. All right? Don't yeah. eat broccoli ever again. In fact, you know what? You can... You can produce a lack, we're just not, we're not quickly. And it's because there's that frustration for parents. Mm -hmm. And because pa everyone's so fucking time poor all the time, it's now a case of like, well, I don't have the time to have the argument. Yeah. And I don't have the money to waste. Don't have the patience. Don't have the patience. So <clears throat> be persistent with it because you'd be surprised. Eventually, weirdly enough, they might request it, mm -hmm. as you've mentioned lately. Well, even I found um, hiding it. Yeah. So like we'll Grating. do a spaghetti bolognese or something like that. And great zucchini, carrot, mm. all of the above in it. And they don't know. Zucchini don't. slice. Yep. Like those sorts zucchini of Zucchini muffins. Egg muffins. Yeah. Those mm. sorts of things. Banana bread without 
a ton of sugar, sugar. added. Yeah. Uh, it, there are ways around it if, of hiding them. And look, honestly, I can't say I haven't been through the toddler stage yet. So I could mm-hmm. be preaching and I'm probably going to go through this myself. Or I could have a kid that just eats, eats everything, everything and that's just, you know, how it is. My brother was very fussy. I was not. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm still not overly fussy, yeah. uh, you know, but have had to remove dairy from my diet entirely because of the breastfeeding situation. So we all go through lots of different dietary changes in life. However, interrelated is that we try to, as you said, introduce as many as possible as quickly as possible Mm -hmm. and be a little bit persistent and know that they're going to go through changes and they're going to change their mind. They're going to try different things. But the problem is that we've got a lot of kids going to school with, and it's unfortunate, but people don't understand nutrition enough. They're going to school with just like, like wheat, just wheat. No fruit. They've got no, um, there's just no variety. It's just wheat. All processed. She will only eat chicken crimpies, you know, and it's like, I like that. uh, Yeah. You mean chicken crimpies. But, you know, she will only eat this particular thing. Yeah. And so it is really, really, really hard for them. I'm not going to go on about there. I'm sure there are individual cases where it's like, you wouldn't know you're not in my situation. Totally get it. Um, but in some cases, it's because mums are like stressed, tired, can't be fucked. Also don't know. Yeah. They don't know. They're yeah. not like understanding of the fact of mm-hmm. it's very important. My child has strawberries or, you know, some apple pieces mm-hmm. or whatever. And there are some pretty good options out there now where it's 99.9%. So it's like, as a nutritionist, I would be more inclined to say, I'd rather you buy the thing that, yes, might be packaged, but is 99.9% a whole food Mm -hmm. than, you know, than something that is highly processed and maybe only only Mm wheat-based. Personally, um, like for Sienna, her lunchbox will be like a sandwich, two pieces of fruit. Nice. Because she's a fruit bat. Yeah, good. Uh, Yogurt. Nice bit of dairy. You know, you try and get a variety of things. Mm. And there's lots of information out there, lots of um, like Instagram pages, those sorts of things, yeah. websites. Ideas. With little ideas. To make it more interesting. To interesting. And kids like fun. They do. Yeah, they enjoy engaging. fun. Get a little star shapes. cutter. Are their sandwiches into shapes? Mm. It's all ex- exploration, yeah. right? Until they establish what they actually really like. Mm. If you think about it, at what age did you establish foods that you know that you do absolutely dislike and like? Like, was there a stage where it's like, I haven't really changed much since then? I don't know. I don't I think would, so. I would say palate fully matured, maybe like my mid-20s. Mm. Like, how crazy is that? Mm. I got to a point where I was like, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty much in my food. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I've always been a sweet tooth. Oh, sweet tooth, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, I was the same. Yeah. Mm. But I just like it all. Yeah. Food is great. Food is delicious. <laughs> Same with sports as well. Mm. The reason why we see a lot of team sports is because it teaches people morale. It teaches kids that, you know, working together. It teaches it teaches and them they're not alone, not getting bored, etc., etc. And commitment. Discipline. Commitment, discipline, all of the above. Mm. Having to show up yeah. for a team, showing up on time, all that type of stuff. The issue with, the issue, yes, resistance training and, and gym training might still be safe, but it may not be overly interesting for them. However, you do see some kids who love. Mm. You, and you see the shift. The shift is around when they're going through puberty. Mm. You see some, or you know, pre-puberty, um, where, you know, eight, nine, ten, a lot of the girls and boys start going, you know, I wouldn't mind going to the gym with mum. Mm. And that the hard part of it is, is that I think it's 12 and over it used to be. You can go if you've got a parent now, slightly yeah, younger. Yeah, I think so. But the shift is now because they're starting to mature, I suppose, a little bit mentally. They can keep their concentration for a bit longer. They understand the importance of applying themselves to a project, maybe long term. Mm. They see what I think as well in our day and age. um, A lot of kids around that age, obviously, are on social media. Yeah. And they They see see the influences with the big muscles and the big bums. Yeah. But they see their parents doing it as well. Yeah. And so I think there's, it's a thought. You're saying that Mm. you could see this and go, I want to be like the people on socials. Or they could be like, I want to be like mum, mum. Yeah. which is kind of cool. So it's, I guess it's about exposure, really. Yeah. And you can't control. No. As much as what we would like to say, back in the day, controlling exposure was a lot easier than it is now. Absolutely. But now it's like, you can't avoid it. No. It's almost impossible. You have to put your kid in a bubble. So you have to teach them as many of your own like moral and family lessons as you exactly. can. Yeah, that's important as well. Yeah, and then hope for the best. Yeah. You know, I guess it's really tricky. It is. Yeah, and I look honestly, I'm five so months old. I am no me. parenting expert. Neither am I. I just have a five year old. You know, all was something I heard once was like every age that you experience with your child is the first time you're ever experiencing that with your child, exactly and it's like right. you're going through this for the first time, like they are too. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
moving on from there, going into puberty, yes, you can definitely go into resistance training. The great thing is it's legal then to go into gyms. They're probably at a, a size where they can fit into the equipment more easily. It's, you know, they're a little bit more sound of mind where they can make yeah. more rational decisions. Yeah. You know, where they're not going to drop something on themselves or maybe they will and maybe they're just a bit tougher. I don't know. They're too but... heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, boys are probably worse for that, mm. not having spotters. But the best thing we can do in this instance, and the benefits of resistance training are that we do see muscle strengthening. We mm -hmm. see, and the, the, the fantastic part of that is that we're protecting joints. You know what I mean? We're preventing injuries through resistance Long training. training yeah. You see a lot of runners injuring themselves because they don't have enough muscle tissue to support the joints. And so they collapse or they roll their ankle. So resistance training is across the board, technically mm. beneficial for everybody of all ages. Mm. I was going to say most athletes will have some form of resistance training mm -hmm. all, in all of your runners all of your runners are doing resistance training of some mm. sort a couple of a week and you see it's a necessity it's required mm. and the great thing about weights training and resistance training we're not kind of like trying to bring you into a cult here mm. it's um you know by our resistance training programs it's that um we even see it all the way through even menopause yeah. and, and beyond so we'll, we'll continue going through the age groups but really, we can't harp on it about it enough. There is no specific age that benefits from resistance training more than the other. Yeah. It, is, it is, well, I would say actually probably the ones that aren't are the ones who are aging, who, who should be doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's never too late to start. You see a big influx of it then. If we then shift out of the teen years going into, and this is interesting too, we see a lot of fat gain around the teen mm. years. Yeah, that was when I put a lot of, a lot, you 10 know, kilos over here, yeah. Um, you get jobs, you have your own income, you mm -hmm. have access, you get cars, you get mm -hmm. your license, you have access Freedom. to fast food, mm -hmm. you start drinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alcohol becomes involved. Mm -hmm. And also as well, at school, right? you're less likely to go and run around after yeah. your friends in because in, it's not cool anymore. You've got to sit mm. down and be cool and sit with your mates and just kind of veg out. Mm. And, and it's so you see the change in lifestyle shifting yeah. and also the rebellion against exercise can mm. happen too where I dropped off the face of the earth with my exercise around the age of, I'm saying, I'm going to say between 15 and 18. Yeah. Well, around that age as well, you're going, I would rather go hang out with my friends. Have a boyfriend. And have a and go to the shops life. and mm. rah, 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 then my hair. go to the gym or yeah. go for a run. Yeah. Or... You might go for a walk every now and then with yeah. your parents because they nag you to. But at that point, there is a bit of a, and this is where we're seeing, and it can actually happen earlier as well. We mm. do see eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds that are just like, nah, no interest in it. Yeah, that's not cool. It, but it, that's because we're at this point where it's already kicking in, yeah. where the sedentary lifestyle becomes a part of their personality, you know, so it's this kind of, and this is where it's our responsibility to get active with them. Mm. Like it really is. And having a bit of persistence there as well and making it fun mm. and all that type of stuff. But, um, I mean, I, did, I didn't, I a child because I couldn't swim, I almost drowned when I was a kid. And we, we've talked about that before, mm. but, um, and then I was so afraid of getting in a pool that I just didn't ever swim, you know, I just avoided it like the mm. plague. I hated swimming, hated getting water up my nose, hated getting water in my ears. Mm. I just was not a fan of it. And then we had these champion swimmers at my school and I was like, well done you, but I, I couldn't <laughs> care less. Good boy, yeah, you. good for you, babes. But I was also the loudest cheerer on swimming carnival day. So I was Love my job. My job was cheering. Not swimming. You wouldn't not see me swimming. in the pool. No, I would wear a wig, like a big red wig. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I can't. It's I weak. Can't swim. Can't. <laughs> I was honestly like known as a. Uh, I like thought I had an allergy to water. It was that. Oh wow. I love going to the beach. I just can't be fucked swimming competitively. I'll mm. swim around in circles if I have to. Like <laughs> just uh, tread water. <laughs> or float. <laughs> I would just float. Float mm. my back. Speaking of which, swimming. We'll move into it because we keep going in order, but mm. swimming is fantastic for pregnancy. Mm. You know, you, you quite like you get heavier, so it's all the you know weight on your joints to relax and everything. So that's really one of one of the, the specific forms of exercise that would be beneficial at different stages in life, pregnancy and as you're aging and mm. getting older swimming. and your joints because it's such low impact yeah. on your goddamn joints. joints. Yeah. Um, and so we see that obviously with years of running, team sports and stuff as a kid, then maybe as you, you age, you might get into the gym. You may not. You, st you may start doing HIIT training. You know, you get into your 20s. Mm. You go, holy shit, I've been eating junk food in my teens and I've been drinking alcohol and I've gone through puberty and they think it's because they've gone through puberty that they've gained a ton of body fat. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Female specific, obviously, when we hit puberty, we put on a little bit yeah. in bum, bum thighs, fat. hips. Thighs, boobies. Yep. We're designed Hips. to do that at that yeah. stage, which can be a bit of a shock for some young women, mm. especially with, I mean, in our era, 
growing up where it was like the thigh gap was, you know, popularised and being mm. skinny and, and thin. So have eyes. I got teased so badly just having legs. And mm. I wasn't even – I was so thin, you yeah, know. Wild. I, I was like 45 kilos when I was 14, 15. Mm. And I was teased because my legs weren't twigs. See, I – obviously <clears throat> being younger than you, I think my – the generation that I grew up in was a little bit more... Oh, it was the Kim Kardashian booty started coming in? Because yeah. I used to get Just missed out. a lot of attention for my butt. Well, that's a stupid thing, right? Because I had a good butt. I used to get teased having slightly more mus- muscly thighs. Or people would point it out. I'd have adults telling me, you must ride horses because you've got quads. And I was like, what the fuck are they on about? Like... Now when I ride horses, I'm a sprinter. Mm. And it was just awful. Like I was yeah, just, I'd sprint horrendous. touch football and they would just tease me, like not tease me, but really bring attention to it. And, you know, you've got these really muscly legs. And I was like, so, such an inappropriate thing. Now I look back thinking, saying to a child, you know, and very athletic. I was, I wasn't chubby or, you know, I shouldn't say the word fat, but I didn't perceive myself as being fat. I yeah. was very slim. I just had great muscle tone in my legs and that was picked on. And then, um, Probably 15, 16, that's when the kind of Kardashian boot yeah. era. And I always had a butt. I used to actually on purpose hide my bum by pulling my pants down a bit further so that my bum wasn't like this, you know, protruding thing. Mm. And then just one day, people were like, you've got a booty. And I'm like, I've always had a butt. Mm. Why all the fuck of a sudden is it a, is it a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and now I've just continued that on. <laughs> yeah, I will continually have a good butt. I, I actually think it's a good thing to endorse it i think it's awful though for those who do struggle to gain muscle in their say, bum it'd be it rolls reverse it's tricky of course because now to... people that don't that struggle to muscle mm. they get teased because they oh, eat a fucking cheeseburger i went through that stage around 2021 which was a bit further along where i did get a pancake bum because i was running it every day you mm. know and so there's that cardiovascular activity there which was too extreme and i wasn't doing i wasn't eating um and yeah I, I was in a weird stage, but I wasn't mm. interested in men wanting me or anything like that. No, but I was... knew that there was no bum there. Yeah. So you, you can be on both sides of the fence. But again, we get to our 20s. So we're, here we are with a bit of extra body fat going, uh-oh, mm. all that alcohol, all that n- not eating as well as maybe I should, should have, have been, uh, not exercising as much, maybe dropping off with that. We then kind of go, well, what do I do now? And mm. so then there's gym culture that steps in where we either see women starting to run specifically mostly or hit training mm. or they'll go to the gym most likely most women are starting group classes running and this doesn't mean that you when you get to that age that you need to be doing that mm. it's just a cultural thing mm. that seems to shift away from you know um running on the playground to doing absolutely fucking nothing or team of sports if you've continued on with that to then you know where i go from here if yeah. you if your team sport isn't taking you anywhere in life you tend to invest more energy into your career then being a bit more health conscious, coming, you know, maybe start to wean off the alcohol a little bit, or some of us have gone and drunk, drunk alcohol into the late 20s, or, yeah. and, uh, and starting to realize, okay, I can't do this for a year on end because I just keep. And so this is where we see a lot of the progressional gaining more body fat, more and more body fat, more and more body fat, having a baby, then on top of that, and you've, been, you've experienced this yourself. But right? See, I experienced that young. Yeah. Obviously, having seen in the early 19, days. Yeah. I was still playing my team sports mm. when I had her. Mm. I actually ha- obviously had to stop when I was about to go off for a big tournament in mm. Coffs Harbour mm. and I couldn't go because mm. I was eight weeks pregnant. Mm. And so changes in lifestyle, really. Mm. Mm. And then after I had her, obviously I spent like a good year where I didn't do anything. Mm. And then... It's very difficult mm. in the early stages. I trained three times a week on a good week. Mm. you know with her and if I didn't know much about my nutrition I'd be in a very shit place you know yeah. as in like I wouldn't <clears throat> if I didn't about it and most people don't no. it's not their fault but this is where we're seeing that you know people might listen to our podcast if you want to send this to someone and go like holy shit it just this it's, it opens up oh, that's what happened for me right like mm-hmm. as in not for me but oh wow well. That's what, alone in that, yeah. that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. Well, you go through your twenties, you start getting a job, or yeah, you get pregnant, you have a few babies, or you have sedentary, one baby, you become job. more sedentary. Exactly. Mm. You're at a desk all day, and all of a sudden, you think, "Why am I stacking on more body fat?" And so, the appropriate forms of exercise in all these facets is still resistance training. You can still go to the gym. You can still do weights. In fact, I would encourage and endorse it. You don't have to do pump classes. 
you can if you enjoy them. But if you want a specific outcome for your body, if you want your body to look a certain way and you want to improve your strength and improve your joint, uh, joint health, mm. resistance training. Like yeah. pump classes, if you go into pump classes and you've done tons of them or you know, you've done all these group classes and you're not getting the physical, like, hmm, it's not really translating to the way that I want to look. You yeah, know, I feel great when I do them, yeah. but it's not really translating to the way I want to look. It might be finding a balance. Yeah. You might do a couple of resistance training sessions and a couple of cardio sessions a week. Yeah. And that's appropriate. However, we see with obviously this high impact stuff, what are the implications long term of run, jump, run, jump, run, jump, run, jump, run, jump? Wear and tear. Wear and tear. What? Ligaments. Joints, Joints. and ligaments. Yeah. Muscles are pretty. Tendons. Muscles are fairly indestructible. Yeah. Right? They Muscles tear. Muscles can take a lot. They like to they be They tear torn. and repair. Yeah, they tear and repair, tear and repair, if the protein is there to do it, right? Yes. To make that happen and sleep. But the big problem we see is that joints and ligaments take a while. They're, they're, they take a long time to strengthen. Mm. We need the calcium there to do it. As we talked about birth control last time, if we don't have that there, then. And so we end up with these dodgy knees, dodgy mm. hips. And people think that it is age related changes in bone, and it, less so. It's because of a prolonged period of time with not enough calcium, hormonal birth control, high impact sports. Mm. Not enough cushioning, not enough uh, muscle tissue recovery. to then support the joints, not enough recovery, not enough protein to then allow the muscles to support mm. the joints. It's a recipe for fucking disaster. Mm. And so this is where we see bone breaks. We see, you know, lots and lots of sprains and instability in ankles and in ongoing injuries. Yeah, well, I've already been, I got told when I had my ACL surgery and meniscus mm. surgery, he said to me, the surgeon that did my knee said to mm. me, you will be at a high risk of arthritis in that knee. Yeah, sports osteoarthritis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because of act of mm. the wear and tear that yeah. I will progressively. And this is the stuff that some people accept as, as the years go on. But nutritional implications through these stages, strengthening joints, keeping your calcium intake up. So dairy, mm. you can get calcium from other things as well. There's fortified calcium foods. If you can't have dairy, fish oil, fish omega-3s, threes, omega-3s. Yeah, threes. we were saying earlier today that you read a thing about... Study, yeah. Um... 40s so yeah fish oil, fish oil specifically is for omega-3s any age group yeah fantastic for brain function incredible for you, you take it while you're pregnant and while you're breastfeeding fantastic for baby's brain function and brain mm. development and skin and everything mm. like nails hair you name it like if you want some good oils get some omega-3s can't really get a lot of it from your diet you can get some from your fish but we've bred our fish to a point where the omega-3s are not abundant so yeah. it's like you're not really going to get that you know, we recommend omega threes as one of the major micronutrient supplements. Well, technically, fatty acid uh, that of any of them will have the highest impact. Yeah. So uh, fish oil is like the king. Yeah. It's like Top you know, you, yeah, you can supplement magnesium, but you get better bioavailable from your food. You can supplement zinc, but it's bioavailable from your food. Mm -hmm. You can supplement iron, more bioavailable from food and mm -hmm. more, better absorbed. The one one micronutrient supplement that has the most evidence to support the fact that we probably won't get a lot from our food is, is omega-3 fish oils yeah. or flax flax, flax. omega-3s yeah. for vegan vegans so we see benefits for joint health in our age groups so and brain function mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. like you name it digestion absorption of other nutrients like it, it, you would just look up the benefits of omega-3s yeah. it's fucking nuts uh, i always forget to take mine yes yeah, so do i <laughs> need to put them on the bench mm -hmm. uh, but Benefits going through menopause, women over 40 specifically, I think it's 40, mm. we see, and men, but men, for, for some reason, they're a bit more durable, as in like, we see the negative impacts of um, menopause earlier, obviously, because men have the decline slowly and we kind of have this sudden onset of mm -hmm. menopause. But as we age, omega-3s, fish oil, are beneficial for not just bone and joint health, but the absorption of protein. Yeah. Because we see a slow decline in absorption of protein due to something called protein resistance, which we, I had no idea about this until I studied it. We actually end up protein resistant as we age. Yeah, wild. So it's something to do with satellite cells and we just, this is tuppence. And so basically the protein's there. Yeah. But we just don't absorb we it as well. We absorb it, yeah. Mm, protein resistance. I wouldn't, uh, yeah. So it's basically, it's just a strange phenomena. And so interestingly enough, one of the major nutritional changes that we should be making is Obviously, as we get heavier and grow heavier, so when we're little, protein is required, but not as high. Mm -hmm. So that's why kids don't have to be eating massive chunks of steak or anything. It's just small little bits here and there. Yeah. But then as you 
age, you get to like, you know, your maximum height or whatever, your protein is, is um, generally calculated per body weight, so protein intake. And then as you age further as a man, a man and a woman, as your testosterone declines as a man and as your estrogen and progesterone declines as a, as a female, natural production thereof, there is this, this protein resistance and you actually then need to oversaturate your protein. So the age group that has the highest protein requirement for body weight is over 40. Is over, well, over 40, yeah, in general, yeah. So aging population. And how many, how many grandpas do you see eating having a protein shake eating steak or yeah. like as in because the appetite is reducing yeah, over time exactly right we have a slow metabolic decline as well which where by each year we have a little bit of a reduction in natural calories burnt metabolic mm-hmm. rate just slowly kind of declines and so you know we then end up with sometimes yes fat gain can kind of creep up because as we're less active and we're kind of not moving as much now and then you know so we see these problems with in life it's like things like pregnancy having children stress everything like that it all just starts to set people back they move less they eat more calories Mm -hmm. they're not making as many conscious decisions Um, look for convenience rather than not as much protein and then they get into the aging years and we see something called sarcopenia which is one of the biggest if not the biggest issue we have with falls in the elderly Mm -hmm. which is basically muscle wastage which then results in them not being able to support their own weight which is wild falling off things all the time, falling down, falling down stairs. It's not an accident just because it's an accident. It's an accident because their legs can no longer support their body weight. Mm. They can't even take steps. Yeah. They can't even get out of a chair. They can't carry their groceries. They can't reach into a cupboard. Something I've noticed, which is quite sad, is that actually, thankfully, my dad is pretty strong. He still swings an axe like a badass. And he's on chemotherapy um, drugs at the moment. And he's out there to... Like, yeah. Well, he's getting a um, port put in, but he's doing quite a bit of physical work. But, like, well, we wouldn't put it past him. He's just the most, you know, incredible human being. Yeah. Like, in that he doesn't see age as a barrier, which yeah. is fantastic, the way that he sees it. My mum, she's honestly so injury prone, but she's got a bad back, lower back, um, declining um, discs in her back. She's got bad shoulders. She went to lift Lila up a little bit, couldn't, couldn't airplane her above her head because she couldn't support her weight. And so this is because of her joint troubles that she's having. And so we're having to work on that with fish oil and stuff like that now. Speaking of the devil, she's waking up. But, um, oh no, she's, she's falling asleep even deeper. Off she goes. That's adorable. She's so relaxed. So these are the changes that we have in, as, as we're aging. And we, we move through um, lifestyle changes are a huge part of it. There we go, she flops back again. Um, but really, specifically... You don't need to be doing yoga and Pilates as an old lady. No. Okay. If you if you love Pilates, I'm not taking your yoga and your Pilates away from you. You can keep doing it. There isn't. Yes, it's low impact. It's still resistance to some. So it's better than nothing. But where the real shit's going to happen is in the gym. Mm. I love seeing women in their sixties oh, and seventies. So I was going to say that. I fucking, I fucking love, love it them. when they got the weights gloves on. Yeah. You just see, you're like, like, oh yeah. But it's an interesting thing, right? You see a woman, you can tell she's clearly maybe like over 50, but you can't tell how old she is mm. if she's in a gym. You could have a woman who is 70 in the gym and you say, oh, how old are you? Whatever. Like rude question to ask, <laughs> but oh, yeah, she tells you, you know, 65 and she'll tell you that really yeah. proudly. I'm 65. And you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. You're jacked. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. Well, that's my goal. Oh, I'll be lifting forever. That's my lifetime goal. It may not be as intense as what it has been, but I will be lifting forever. Because mm. I know I, I would, I have to support mm. resistance-based training. Honestly, I would support swimming probably more than I would yoga and Pilates yeah. in aging women. Because at least with swimming, you've got that resistance there. Low impact on the joints. The resistance is going to be higher than yoga and Pilates slightly. Mm. But then, and then obviously you get the cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular benefits so as well. Things, yeah. On that note, with cardiovascular benefits, we don't have to keep running into our old years. If joints start to wear away, and, and even before that, walking is perfectly fine. Yeah. You walking, know, actually, there's actually, I think there's more studies done on the health benefits of walking rather than Cardiovascular running. benefits. You do mm. not have to run to keep your heart healthy. Mm. You do not have to... What? Where in your mind do you think that you had to run to keep your heart healthy? You just have to move. Yeah. Your heart just has to beat slightly faster than being seated. And you just have to get the, the blood pumping. And obviously as well, all throughout life, saturated fats. Keeping your saturated fats below 10% of your total daily intake, it doesn't matter what age you are. Saturated yeah. fats are not good for you or no. your heart. And over time, they will settle on your organs. It is proven 
and it's nasty stuff and they're in everything. They are. So um, I think there is definitely this idea, as I said, that like there's drastically different measures needed for different age groups. Yes and no. In the early days, it's trying to establish solids, prevent allergies, yada, yada. Like, and obviously trying to allow a child to d- determine what they enjoy eating mm-hmm. and also getting some balance in there with health and fiber and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, the recommendations, the, the food pyramid, it's actually not bad. No. The food pyramid is not fucking fantastic. Yeah. If you want something that is fairly simple to follow, especially for your kids and for yourself and you don't want to think about tracking food or having a meal plan, mm-hmm. look at the food pyramid. It exists for a reason. It's written by dietitians. You know, yes, it says cereals are a huge part of it. I mean, how much does Nestle have to do with that? But, (laughs) however, not wrong. You know, Mm. getting a lot of whole grains into your diet, every meal should have some sort of whole grain in it of some sort. Try different types of whole grains, not just variety. Try variety. More importantly as well, we'll probably, I don't think I've got anything else I really wanted to note in this, but finishing up, don't think that you have at any time in your life I need to do any sort of specific type of exercise based yeah, on your age. I can't age. do that because I'm old. I'm too old. I yeah. can't be in a gym. I'm too old. Who the yeah. fuck said that? You go, you go into a gym. If I saw little old Nana coming into the gym, I'm sure she'd be slightly intimidated because it is pretty scary sometimes mentally. Mm. But if she came in to try and use the cables, I would be, oh my, I'd be so respectful. I'd be mm. like, you know, I wouldn't try and if she wanted help, job. I would help. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure all the blokes in the gym would as well. Mm. But we don't see that a lot. No. But they did the family gyms, the little ones. Yeah, you yeah. can see them going in and, and doing their weights. And I used to manage a gym, and there was this lovely, lovely little old lady. She's oh, so really? sweet. God, I can't remember her name. Every day she came in. Oh wow! Every day, and she'd come in and do weights. Well, I guess they when you reach a certain point. She's like eighty, <laughs> and like you're bored in your, your little retirement home. I think her partner had passed away. Yeah. And she was she loved having chat. She'd bring us in little treats and things. She's honestly oh. like gym grandma. Actually, I'm pretty sure we did call her the gym grandma. Yeah. Um, she was pretty cool. She dye her hair pink sometimes and stuff, but she was a little, oh, wow. little old thing. She's so sweet. And um, a little old thing. She <laughs> was. She was. So, and, but like, you know, come in and do her weights training. And I just love seeing that. I was like, you know what? More of that, please. Yeah. You do see these women's clubs, the women doing their weights training. And I think, honestly, incredible. Mm. It, like, look at the studies. It increases the length of your life, your joint health, prevents your falls, you know, prevents chronic illness and chronic disease. It's just so beneficial and it really is so 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 plain and fruit and veg water you know sleep the recovery. basics yeah. recovery apply all the way through your life making sure your kids are getting enough sleep is really important you know making sure they're not up late doing shit mm-hmm. that they, they're getting a plenty rest because their brains and their and their bodies are very active and for yourself as well if you are sedentary if you've noticed oh yeah well i have started gaining a bit of more body fat probably because the balance is out of whack there you know so um age is not an excuse um you know life circumstances can absolutely having children and everything like that can change exactly what your optimal you're not gonna have some sort of and this is i actually saw something the other day a reel it's the best thing ever Mm. this other coach she said i'm a mum i don't have a morning don't have time for a morning routine Mm. Some, some days and i struggle to do whatever the yada yada and she's like understand your perspective yeah we this is the thing i i was and wasn't before yeah. drastically my life and the way that the time that i have in the day would mm-hmm. change for my what i had time for myself and my career and my baby and that i could no longer be the same person i used to be it's a big mental game and a big <sighs> mental shift identity shift i went from being a person who was so immersed in me and mm. i actually am kind of glad i made the shift it's going to sound really odd because I was so like me, 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 and you know, I'm doing this and me, 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 and mm. it's selfish error. And then, and I'm not saying you need to have a child to not be selfish, but I watch people without children now going like, they are in the era of me. And I'm like, man, I remember that. You know, I remember the time yeah. where I like, you're almost naive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you can't help it because like no. back when I didn't have a baby, like for example, each vlog, I'd do my face really nicely or, um, you know, my lunch, I could actually think about what I was eating for lunch. And sometimes, honestly, Alex will ask me, like, what would you like for lunch? I'm like, food. <laughs> like, I yeah. just don't care. Like, just fucking make me something um, while I've got the baby. And so you have this huge shift. There is a huge shift when you become a parent. 
in how much time you have. However, being resourceful, knowing that you don't need to be fucking perfect with everything, mm. but it's not the extreme. It's not yeah. just chicken. It's not the all or nothing. Yeah, so. just chicken nuggets or only organic apples. Yeah. Like somewhere in the middle here. Yeah. Have the chicken nuggets and the organic Have the apples. chicken nuggets and then make some air fried sweet potato fries with it. Like yeah. pair it with something that makes sense from a nutritional perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, protein, fats, carbs. We're going kind to of tick those boxes, steer clear of the saturated fats. <clears throat> Try and introduce some omega 3s into your diet. Try and get out for walks for your family on weekends if you don't get a lot of walks uh, mm-hmm. um, during, the during the week. Uh, if you've got an excuse to get off your bum in the office, do it. Park further away from your, from, your, office. Uh, from your office. And make those small changes now because it is cumulative. People think it's age. It's not age. It's life circumstances and time that makes these changes progressively Absolutely. over time. And um, children are, yes, somewhat gifted with a dynamic metabolic rate, but it's not superhero powers. No. Um, and we don't have to be afraid of resistance training for all ages. Um, but anyway, I think that's about it. Mm-hmm. Have we covered everything? Probably mm-hmm. not. There's a lot. But yeah, we could delve onto this for a long, long time. Fiber is also a really important part of it because as you, as you age, you know, as we've seen, I've talked about this before, the, the risk of bowel cancer yeah, is, is quite say, high. Um, Even as young people, it's, it's, a, it's a high, high, yeah. high risk issue. It's the same shit we keep saying. More fruits and vegetables. More they, don't, they don't recommendations and shit for no reason. Thank you. We're not trying to be assholes. We're not trying to ruin your life. We're not trying to force you to eat things that you don't like. Don't eat fruits you don't like. Don't eat vegetables you don't mm. like. But try and find, find the things that you do. Mm. And I mean, I've them. never met someone who doesn't like strawberries. I have. I yeah, mean, I, I know people who are allergic. Yeah, I've met someone. Oh, I mango. Maybe one. No, mango. No, Alex hates mango. What? My little sister's highly allergic to mango. I, I think I know someone else mango. who's highly allergic to mango as well. I, don't, I couldn't. Mango nectar? Mango nectar is, oh, I used to drink that by the litre when Mm. I was a kid. I'm sure that from a perspective of, you know, dental cavities, that drinking too much juice is not overly beneficial. But I always say to people, if you're going to drink juice, drink 100%, like, mostly fruit juice. Mm. Don't, like, look at the back if it's reconstituted or whether it's 99% fruit juice. Mm -hmm. If your kids are going to drink juice, there's not recommended in the early years, obviously, because teeth tooth decay. I used to water it down. Water it. Um, I'd rather, honestly, from a nutritionist perspective, I'd rather someone drink 99.9% juice than soft drink. Mm. because soft drink it's just it's just sugar it's just and it's also not the devil like soft drink before you know for athletes and stuff maybe we can kind of incorporate it here mm. and there to introduce calorie increase calories but it's more preferential from a micronutrient perspective mm. you're going to get the micros from that and um those disease preventing um benefits not to mention the polyphenols and antioxidants and micronutrients that are beneficial for injuries and recovery from you know all sorts of things so like really it's not just micronutrients from preventing sickness but these age-related, you know, uh, injuries that we're having as well, we can actually treat them with fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Yep. It's crazy. The amount of things you see people going to GPs for and going to surgeons for that could be easily adjusted Helped. with nutrition yeah. and exercise, basic changes. Exactly right. Okay, that's it. We're going to stop rambling. We could do it forever. We really could. Talking about foods make me hungry. Is it? What mm. time is it? Oh, yeah, no, it's definitely it's lunchtime. On that note, we're going to go and have our lunch with our micronutrients and vegetables mm-hmm. and we're going to do our resistance training sessions. So are we today? Yes, I am. You are. This is my first time back at the gym in like two, two weeks. Two weeks. She's going to be in the world of pain. Keep <sighs> your protein up. Anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. Looking forward to doing another podcast for you soon.